Oh, 10 best sneakers from the Paris Fashion Week. This is quite cool. From Hypebeast, right? Um, Again, Paris Fashion Week article, uh, blog or vlog or video or podcast I've got to do probably later on today. There's a lot of things I've got to catch up on that I haven't really spoken about. But so far, there's a really cool roundup from Hypebeast that kind of round up some of the better shoes to come out during the season. I want to quickly go through them so we can kind of have an idea on what's coming out and what's going on. Um, what do we have here? Da, da, da. Let's quick, let's go for make sure these are right. Oh, actually, these are these not the right one. I want the ones from Vogue. Let's see if I can get it here. Uh, oh no, let's let's do this from Hype Beast. Let's let's, let's go through this because some of the ones I like, some of them I don't like. So this is from Hype Beast, right? Beep, 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 beep. The ten most notable shoes from Paris Fashion Week for twenty for two thousand twenty. Again, Paris Fashion Week, you know, it's the premier place for menswear. I think everyone's kind of noticed that. You always see the levels jump up from, like, London, Milan to Paris. It's just not fair, the amount of talent that's there, uh, the amount of expertise, the fact that everyone shows out for it, the fact that all the streetwear brands have now kind of adopted Paris as, like, their kind of home away from home. Paris is, like, turned into kind of the new Berlin. Because I remember when Bread and Butter was the thing in Berlin, or I forgot the other one in Amsterdam. There's another, there another kind of trade show thing they used to go on in Amsterdam. Everyone used to go there, but now it feels like everyone is going to Paris to go and hang out, showrooms, activations, launches. That's the place to go because, well, again, all the menswear stuff is there. So if you're a menswear brand, it will be smart for you. If you're a, if you're a streetwear brand and you want to attract other men to go and buy your product, it will be smart for you to go head, of, head over to Paris Fashion Week when that was on, right? So this is Hype Beast article kind of rounding up some of the 10 most notable ones that are on social that are kind of bubbling up and stuff. So um, first on the list here is Valentino and Onitsuka Tiger Mexico 66 SD sneaker. Um, I'm going to pass on these, even having a comment. I hate the Onitsuka Tiger. I think they had a short run during the whole Kill Bill thing. Right, when everyone was kind of trying to make these work. But as an actual sneaker to wear, no thank you. If I'm going to wear this kind of like indoor soccer shoe, I'm just going to go for Adidas Gazelle. It's a classic. It's got a lot of history behind it. It's a staple. It should be a staple in everyone's wardrobe. And it looks far better than the Nitsu Tiger. So, um, yeah, I'll pass on them for the most part. Of course, you're going to see the same person that wears all red Yeezys probably wearing this kind of shoe. Fluorescent, bold colors, the massive logo on the side. If you care about that kind of branding, it's definitely in the shoe for you. But for me, I'll pass um actually the the og vintage shoe looks quite cool so it's a vintage og colorway white upper blue accents with the sort of like suede new bucky uh front little toe cap thing which looked pretty interesting with the stamp of the valentino on the side that looks quite great i would have preferred to have the valentino stamp on the instep instead of the outside of the shoe just for my own sake because again i don't like the over branding but as a shoe not too bad but not for me uh next on here we have the uh raf simmons runner which is essentially just his rip on um, on a Stan Smith. Uh, again, I would imagine the good thing about Raf Simmons, because he's such an attention to detail hog and he's such a obsessive of a design, he's probably made some little tweaks um, on the Stan Smith that he probably wasn't a fan of, right? So when brands collaborate with, when luxury brands, when just any brand collaborates with a sportswear or a trainer or a sneaker or athletics brand, that can make something for them because they can't have the resources to make them themselves because, you know, shoes are really expensive to make. You usually do it on a model that you kind of are exploring to kind of introduce it to market or you have your dream shoe. Then once you get the resources or the investment to make your dream shoe, you end up tweaking the things that you don't like about that shoe to make it work for your own vision. That's what I love about it. So, you know, I think about the Selena Force One. I think about the Balenciaga Triple S, even a recent one. I think about the Alexander McQueen shoe, that stacked one. Like they look at a, a model that's on the market and they're like, you know what? I would love if I could, if it could be like that, if it could be like this, if it could be like that, and they do these little tweaks. So sometimes I think, even though it looks really plain, it looks really simple, there's probably a lot of detail in this um, Raph Simmons runner that we're not seeing that's probably going to make it a little bit better than the stance that you get from Adidas, which again, it's a great shoe, especially the 80s retro that they put out with the sort of like off-white midsole and off-white kind of cell upper. It's really a beautiful shoe, but it's a very particular shoe to wear depending on your feet. And for my feet, <clears throat> So I'm a big fan of this so far. Um, it looks like it's a completely leather. Is that oh suede insole? Or is it a complete leather insole? That would have been pretty sweet. But yeah, um, a kind of essentially just like a Stan Smith um, in luxury uh, leather, really buttery really soft with the pier rise. Then you have this amazing sort of like Hirachi type shoe with a kind of flap on the front of it, which looks very interesting. I like the look of that. And just from the look of it as a range, it looks already two shoes. These two shoes look a lot more interesting than the entire thing Raph has done with Adidas. Because again, those Oru Jews or whatever they're called, I was never a fan of them. I thought they looked a bit meh, especially considering the stuff that Raph does for his mainline collection. 
the ALS collaboration looked a bit like an afterthought, as if like you know it's something that he picked up. It looked like you know the you know what they looked at like? the Origins. It looked like a shoot ADAS were contemplating to make, didn't make it. It was on the kind of cutting room floor, and Raf Simon saw that and just kind of co-opted it. That's what it looked like to me. It didn't look like he actually designed the shoe because these look a lot more in line with Raf Simon's aesthetic than those shoes ever did. So those these two are pretty cool. Then it has this amazing little like ballerina pump. A booty with like a really high heel on it which looks great i want to see what that looks like on um it's essentially just like a non sock it's like a socky uh upper that's leather with like a, a trainery kind of heel on the back of it amazing detail very well put together again reminds you of something a stud that the studio high go whatever that studio is in, in in holland that does all those really interesting um diy sneaker projects it looks it looks like something that they would do so I'm interested to see what that looks like once they put a sock on it or other materials. But so far on the leather, that looks really beautiful. And then last but not least, you've got the kind of Chelsea boot, which is probably my favorite of the whole collection. It looks like a you know, quintessential riding boot in this really luxe leather with Raph Simmons stamped on the, on, the, on the side. And yeah, just a kind of seamless, smooth upper at the top with this amazing ring pull tab at the back, which is a little bit BDSM-y, but again, really up my street. So those are really interesting. Moving on. We got the Cold War uh, for Winter in-house shoe collection. He's been he's been kind of debuting. He's been kind of um, slipping this out little by little on the runway, um, which I would like. Did a couple of collections with collaborations with Nike, and then for the most part, Simon has been kind of really steering himself towards the uh, trying to make his own shoes, and I love it because you know he did, makes his own soundtrack, has his own furniture, um, set design is all in-house. It only makes sense for the aesthetic of a Cold War to kind of bring your shoes in-house too, and for me. They look beautiful. Again, it's a kind of a flip of an Air Force One that he's kind of looked at an Air Force One, decided the bits and the elements that you like about it and don't like about it, and then trying to bring it in to your kind of brand ethos. And it looks fucking beautiful. Luxury leather, um, all black upper, uh, minimal paneling. Uh, I love the little detail at the back. I think it's suede or nubuck, little detail here in the back. Uh, solid midsole, one color. Um, but my favorite, of course, is definitely this Chelsea boot. This Chelsea boot looks insane. Look, the whole rippled sole behind, like just really, really beautiful sole. Uh, massive chunky heel. Um, and again, just something that I'd, I'd wear the fuck out of this shoe every single day. Um, then you've got a sort of like a little kind of walking shoe. Would you call it a walking shoe? Like a kind of everyday sort of like hiking shoe, which was pretty cool. And you've got the Chelsea boot uh, sole put on the essentially like a derby, I'd imagine. It's probably got laces. That I could probably cover it on the inside there. And then last but not least, you've got this sort of like runner, which is probably my least favorite of the shoe in collection that's in there. But so far, three out of four shoes for your first um, kind of like footwear outing is probably good with me. Of course, you've got the Air Jordan 5 Virgils, which I'm off white, sorry, that I've kind of spoken about already. Um, then you've got Dior for winter footwear, which again, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this Dior Converse, especially the, the other one that was a kind of net, but I don't really find this kind of pile uh, fur one, I think it looks a bit shit personally, but I like um, the approach again. So these ones are the best. These sort of like translucent or kind of conversey looking ones. They look really good. I saw a girl wearing them actually the other day. They looked incredible, especially on smaller feet. Um, the boots, not really a big fan of, so I'll skip on those. Of course, the Elite's um, Air Force One. You know my opinion on those. One of my favorites easily. You know my opinion on black shoes, <laughs> especially black Air Force Ones, especially black Air Force Ones high, especially black and white Air Force Ones. Like just everything's a win. Entire collection is an absolute win, an absolute go. I can't wait to see what he's looking like in real life. And then you've got lastly, you've got the Kiko Kosta Kostandinov Asics. He's been doing asset collaborations from the minute, isn't it? From day dot, really. Um, so that's cool to see. I'm surprised he hasn't done a collaboration with Hook with with Hoka One One, right? Um, I'm pretty sure I saw. Was it the first couple of shows? He did? Most of these models were wearing Hoka shoes. I'm pretty sure. I'm surprised why they hadn't done one with them. Maybe they don't collaborate much. Because you don't really see them doing many any collaborations, do they? Only with like engineered garments and stuff. You don't really see many much from them. But yeah, they look pretty cool. Again, um, I, the stuff that he does the best, I think, with the collaboration with Asics is usually the boots or some of the stuff he's done with Camper. I really like them. I think the runners are so-so, but I think the boots, he's always got a really interesting way of kind of, you know, um, introducing weird models at, with a brand you don't really associate making those kind of boots. Like they've got this, remember that kind of big duck, sort of like wintry uh, Wellington boot thing he did with Camper? Like, he did really, some really cool stuff. So, I think he's got a really good talent with that. Again, the runners, I'm not really a big fan of because I would get that kind of shoe from somebody else. But I think the boots are really, really stellar. So, I can't even see what they look like. Look in. Look, look, look how amazing that looks. That, that's an ASIC shoe, you know? It's still in this kind of like faux lizard or crocodile skin um, upper. It's fucking banging. So, big up him with that one. 
um, and another interesting shoe there too pinned as well at the bottom there for detail um, and then of course you've got the Futura Vibram Gore-Tex sneaker which I previewed before as well and last but not least you've got the Sakai for winter 20 shoes which in my opinion I've said to my friend recently I think this is the best one I know the first LDV, LD Waffle everyone's kind of uh, still kind of wanking over but I think these are the best ones these look so banging like I love how exaggerated and how ridiculous they look I love the fact that they've kind of taken the whole like um, stacking the models on top of each other to the nth degree you've kind of got look how far that lace day comes up to the front of the shoe it's incredible the paneling the application of it the colorway and again you know what's really clever about this too the genius level is the colorway application because I think the model itself with the whole like stacking of the shoes is cool but you could really fuck it up easily if you don't get this right the color placements it can really look crazy but I don't know there's something about how they do it it just works really really well man wow these are going to be so popular when they come out so definitely if you want a pair definitely get your name down the list next we've got the white man sneering into corny ugg interesting collaboration there ugg is trying to make a movement into oh yeah they've got these stacked shoes i previewed on my twitter in it yeah so these look a bit like hookers on their own so i think everyone's trying to make a the next kind of big hit in terms of footwear for the next season so you're going to see a lot of these coming out again interesting shoe i love the look of it interesting to see how ugg is kind of deviating away from their traditional sort of like booty boot that looks really cool i'd actually wear that to be fair that is it ugg and dana wow oh no, uh, so they've got a collaboration with Sukorni, Ugg, and Dana. Okay, I'm about to say. So that's a Dana, but that's not an Ugg. About to say that, that looks really nice. That's too good for an Ugg in here. No offense to them, lot. And there's a Sukorni. Okay, see, that's interesting. Fashion brands are allowed to collaborate. This is one season and they've got collaboration with free. But I guess because they're not free, probably they don't operate in the same markets, right? They're collaborating with three different brands in one collection. Interesting, isn't it? Sukorni, Ugg, and Dana. Okay, fair enough. But I like, I like it. I like what I see different from what I'm And I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, so that's it. Um, whole list is there on, on, on Hypebeast. Again, I'll put in the show notes for you guys to check out yourself. 10 most notable shoes from Paris Fashion Week 4 into 20.